Justin Goes to Hollywood. I am Groot. And this is the Silver Linings Playlist, where a podcast that tries to find the silver lining in some of cinema's most bleak endings. See, Mally, that's how you do it. Okay. <laughs> You've messed it up before, too, so I do not want to hear it. All right, so thank you for joining us, everybody. Um, if you're new to the show, what we like to do is we like to watch movies that have down, sad, fucked up endings, whatever you want to call them, and uh, build a playlist, uh, just a list of movies you can watch like that that don't leave you feeling too great. But we are the heroes of this story. We like to come in and give you a silver lining at the end of each one of them. So at least you can walk away saying, well, at least some good happened at the end. And uh, we actually made an exception this week. We kind of pushed our schedule around to fit this movie in because it's just it's such a big movie. We couldn't not talk about it. Um, yeah, so I think this is only the second time we've done a movie that's still in theaters. Yeah, yeah. It's this and La La Land. So, yeah. Um, yeah, we, you can tell by the episode title, of course, we're talking about part one of two with uh, Avengers Infinity War. Um, this movie Had is to do massive. It. Had to do it. Yeah, it, everybody's seen this movie. Yeah, this was, man. How, how many times have you seen this, Dustin? I've only seen it once. I've ah. only seen it once. Three oh, I should, times, <laughs> boom. I should introduce our guest uh, for the episode. Oh, yeah. I'm introduce hey. myself. <laughs> uh, please welcome Jesse Braswell. Hello, Jesse. Thank you for being on the show. Hello. Thank you for having me. Um, we are so unprofessional. <laughs> <laughs> but, Miley, this, this marks a milestone for us. We actually have a female voice on the show for once. Oh my God! What? Finally, where I'm... where were you? Where was she on Blue Valentine? Knock knock. Um, knock knock. <laughs> every other movie we've ever done. <laughs> um, Jesse, you've seen this one once, right? Yes, yes, I saw it once. Um, the weekend it came out, mm-hmm. I saw it. I went by myself because <laughs> I Re- love respect. the Avengers, <laughs> respect. Yeah. and I wanted to see it, and so I I went, and it was, it was yeah. So it lived up to the hype for it you? It lived up to the hype yeah. for me. And I was... Oh, guys, I have so much to say about this movie. <laughs> yeah, I, I have a lot of notes. I geeked... I have never geeked out as hard as I did during this movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for sure. Like, I okay, I was in... So I bought my... T- like, I woke up at 7 a.m. the day these tickets went on sale and ordered them, like, a month and a half ago. <laughs> and... I was in Charleston, South Carolina the morning of the 26th. I then, like, I got back to Atlanta at 10 p.m. I was at the theater, like, after a five-hour drive, and I was at the theater by 10.45. Like, let's do this. I'm ready. I got super lucky. Nothing was stopping me. I got super lucky and managed to see it opening weekend, having not bought tickets. I just did a matinee and managed to get... I, I, this was kind of the weirdest experience I've ever had. That's a I, bold move, sir. I know. I bought a ticket on Fandango, got to the movie theater. It was an early showing at like 1045 that morning, and no one was taking tickets. So I just kind of walked in. <laughs> nice. Nice. But I, I, I still put a refund on PayPal to get my $9 back because technically they never took the ticket. So <laughs> as far as Fandango knows, I never saw that movie. Well, um, I did the same thing. I did a well, matinee, yeah. but they took my ticket, oh, okay. so I, I, I didn't get any money back. My money went to the Avengers, which is fine. If any of our listeners list, like work at Fandango, you're screwed, man. <laughs> um, all right, so let's, I mean, I highly doubt that. Let's talk but. about Avengers. It's a course of this year, 2018, directed by the Russo brothers. Who have directed some of the better Marvel movies for me? Uh, oh my! And some of the best television shows on the face of the planet. For sure, uh, they did Winter Soldier. I believe they did Civil War. This. Yeah, they did. So they've done like all the the bigger ones. Um, okay. And of course, you know, they directed some episodes of Community and some stuff like that. Um, and Arrested Development. Mm-hmm. Hello. Uh, the movie stars literally every actor currently working in Hollywood. There's <laughs> there's no way I can go through all of them. Oh, no, no, please. Please list just the people credited on the poster. <laughs> That's all of them. <laughs> um, the, the Half the poster is credits. Uh, the budget is around $300 million. I couldn't find an exact number. Oh, my God. Um, but it's, oh yeah, so it was a you know it was a small little indie film. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's managed to gross one point one billion dollars in only eleven days, so it's basically shattering the record. Um, oh my god, breaking every record. Yeah, this thing I believe hit half a million, uh, a half a billion before the uh, the opening weekend was finished. That's insane. It's nuts. Um, it's eighty four percent certified fresh on Rotten Tomatoes as well, which is. 
Fair. Honestly, no. All like everyone was like, "Oh, it should have been in the '90s." No, eight, like mid '80s seems about right. This yeah. was, especially with the ending, which we'll talk about later. It was a pretty decisive film. Yeah, it's a little rough around the edges at some parts, parts too, but it's still super impressive. Yeah. Oh man, that's true. I would this agree movie with was that. Am- this movie was amazing. All right, um, Mally, do you yeah. want to listen to the trailer first? Yeah. All right. There was an idea to bring together a group of remarkable people to see if we could become something more. So when they needed us, we could fight the battles that they never could. Desperately that you're right, yet to fail all the same. Dread it. Run from it. Destiny still arrives. Evacuate the city. Engage our defenses. And you get this man a shield. Fun isn't something one considers when balancing the universe. But this <laughs> does put a smile on my face. So I like this trailer because it's got a real good sense of tension building. It, you can feel the impending doom and sense of adventure. It's it's very palatable. Um, I like. I'm such a big fan. I was a big sucker with this with the Force Awakens trailer too. The ominous piano, slow build, the single keys. Oh, dude, huge fan. Yeah, so they took the Aven- like the classic Avengers theme from the first two movies. Mm-hmm. They obviously just did the mellow piano but they changed one note to make it into a i'm gonna music nerd to make it into a minor chord into a minor key yeah and holy shit (laughs) it's amazing um i've i've been listening to that regularly (laughs) um just to depress myself it's so good (laughs) it's it's impressive how much they managed to pack in this one trailer and still not reveal too much of the plot and still kind of manage to give every character a little moment. I mean, let's be honest, best part of this trailer, bearded Captain America. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. 1,000%. Thank you. Okay. I have have not cut my hair or shaved (laughs) since this trailer came out. I was like, that's my new look for now. (laughs) He looks good. He He looks, looks, he looks better than any other movie. Very good. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Agreed. Uh, So I think the big elephant in the room, uh, metaphorically and physically is we got to talk about the last shot of the trailer and why it's not true to the movie. Where is the Hulk in Wakanda? Yeah. He's n- yeah. yeah. Um, That's so weird. I have, uh, I, so living in Atlanta has its perks. Um, I know quite a few people who worked on this movie as well as a lot of Marvel stuff, as well as Avengers four. Um, I, they can't really, tell me anything about Avengers 4, which is a bummer. Mm-hmm. But since Infinity War is out, they could tell me a little bit about it. Um, that ending was actually reworked a little bit. I figured. Um, originally, Hulk was in Wakanda. Um, but they, I don't know, they have some big arc planned that started with Ragnarok, goes through Infinity War, and 
apparently his arc is going to finish in Avengers 4, at least this little trilogy arc. Mm-hmm. Um, so I guess they kind of reworked his arc. So we'll probably get a lot more Hulk in Avengers 4, but I know originally he was supposed to be in the end of this movie. Oh, no, yeah, I can like, totally tell. I don't tell. know a lot of specifics, but... I, I could totally tell the whole him not being able to turn into the Hulk was definitely like kind of shoehorned in there. And that's why I say the film's kind of rough around the edges. Well, that was always in there. Well, it just feels like with like the, that, that bit of him not being able to Hulk out was always part of the movie. It was the end um, yeah. um, where pretty much from what I understand from the very small amount I was allowed to know, um, pretty much at the end when he's fighting uh, call obsidian, who, and for comic readers, they changed Black Dwarf's name to Call Obsidian for some reason. Mm-hmm. Um, he was supposed to, like, pretty much get his ass beat and then hawk out. Yeah. Um, but apparently they changed that for some reason or it something. Also, I don't know. It's also super convenient because the Hulk, who could pretty much be anybody, can't Hulk in this movie. Uh, uh, he, <laughs> uh, Hulk got his ass ass beat mm-hmm. yeah, he did but which okay i love i love that callback to the first avengers with loki being like well we have a hawk. yeah yeah, hawk yeah comes out whoops ass for maybe 2.5 seconds and then like i love that it's not just like they're not just showing that thanos is like absurdly strong or powerful because you notice he's not using the power stone which he already has mm-hmm. which i thought was a bold move to start with like, oh, no, he definitely destroyed Xandar already. Look, he has the stone already. Yeah. That was a bold move to just start with that and yeah. start with, like, Thor already getting his ass kicked and just gloss over that entirely. Bold move. Yeah. Uh, it worked, though. Um, but I like Start late, finish early. Yeah, so, like, Thanos isn't even using the power stone in that scene because it's you can tell every time he uses a stone it's glowing, and I noticed on my second rewatch it's not glowing in that scene, so mm-hmm. he's, that's just brute Thanos strength. Yeah. But I love that, like, they show Hawk is obviously strong, but Thanos is smarter because he goes like full like, pr- like meditated like boxing strategy. Like his first few punches against Hawk are just to throw him off balance. Then he goes in for the KO. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I, I that was so well done. I think I would have liked it more him not being able to Hulk out if they referred more to like Thor Ragnarok, where like he was Hulk for like two years. And so yeah. it's like taking a toll on him, but they kind of gloss over it and uh, it's more like, oh, he does, he can't turn into Hulk because he's scared of Thanos. Well, they want, I think they wanted to make it more funny, like yeah. more comedic thing. Mm-hmm. I thought it was really funny when he was like, yeah. Hulk, Hulk. And yeah. then it, he was like, no. no and yeah. then he went back in. I thought that was funny. And the. Oh, dude, those like the scenes of him in New York trying to Hulk out got such like, I like they yeah. were funny to me, but they got huge laughs. Yeah, yeah. it was very was slapstick. Same. same in my Which, theater. Yeah. Like, like, again, I saw it opening night. So like the theater was packed. Yeah. Like, like it was almost standing room. <laughs> um. <laughs> Fuck a fire code. Anyway, um, <laughs> like, dude, like, it was so much. Like, I did have to see it two more times just to catch little, like, nuances and little lines that I missed because people were cheering too loud. Yeah. But, like, it was seeing this movie with, like, a th- crowd f- full, like, a theater full of people that were just, like, all in was so much fun. My th- like when Spidey first pops up and catches Call Obsidian's hammer, yeah. he's like, "Oh, hey, man!" <laughs> People just went off. They were like, "It's Tom Woo! Holland." Everyone loves Tom yeah. Holland. He's adorable. <laughs> yeah, I mean, except for you know Marvel because he keeps spoiling stuff. Yeah, they I wouldn't let him read the does. script. <laughs> Dude, ve- very, very few cast members read the script. Yeah, very few, um, especially him. I guess I guess we should, we're actually already into the film, so let's talk about it. the The question that's on everyone's minds when the movie's over is who who is actually dead and who is going to come back? Because we know that's what's going to happen in the next movie. Th- things are going to get undone by the time stone or something. But Dustin, yes, I'm going to ask you something. Go okay, ahead. You ready? Yeah. <laughs> Dustin, do you have a theory? I have a theory. <laughs> okay, let's go. Let's hear it. Let's get it out of the way. My theory, I think, is pretty much oh, in line Jesus. with uh, most of the internets. And I think just, we were talking about this before we started recording, but Jesse and I are kind of in agreement that anybody that died not at the hands of the gauntlet itself is dead dead. So my list, my, my count, I've got Loki, I've got Gamora, dead. Dead. Heimdall, dead. and Vision. 
Which yeah. Vision is kind of questionable. That's but, what I was about to say, too. Because mm-hmm. Vision is... I Well, because Vision, they introduced that arc of that romance between Scarlet Witch and Vision. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden just, you know, mm-hmm. bulldozed it. So yeah. I'm like, I don't know if they're going to miss an opportunity to have some kind of a romance. Yeah, this know? is like the first time they really got into it since... Uh, the Civil War? Civil War. Civil yeah. War. Yeah, like they, they planted a small seed in Age of Ultron at the very end. Yeah. They kind of built it up a little bit in Civil War, mm-hmm. but then the, like this one they were like all it out. Was, like yeah. this, It's in the comics. We're doing it. Boom. Which that's my favorite part of this movie. They were like, let's take all that rad shit from the comics that people don't think we're going to do and just fucking do it. <laughs> <laughs> my, um, my big plot hole grievance, though, is with the entire MCU, the biggest plot hole I see. Your tongue right now. My biggest plot hole <laughs> issue <laughs> is Scarlet Witch is just ever disappearing Russian accent because she doesn't even try oh anymore. Oh, my God. I totally forgot <laughs> okay. about that. Yeah. Hold on. Right? Hold what on. the heck? Hold on. She doesn't even care Hold anymore. On. <laughs> it, but, Hold on. It, where this, is, all right. Age of Ultron <laughs> happened like... It's been two years since Civil War. It's implied. Are think, you telling me she Civil just got yeah. inund- inundated with? No. Okay, but dude, no. Okay, like I have, fr- I, I have a friend who lived, like, literally grew up in like Nashville, Tennessee, lived in England for a year, and has a slight accent now. Like you would start, like, and she's lived in America for how many years at this point? You would adapt, but a Russian accent, you wouldn't just lose. She's, it's still there <laughs> at times, only barely. Like certain things that she says, and barely. It's, I was when I was watching it, I literally, I think I remember that I said something to myself where I was like, this "Oh yeah, is isn't stupid. she Russian?" <laughs> I was like, "What's? Why is she doing okay, this?" Okay, okay. First off, she's Sokovian. <laughs> Whatever. Well, so. okay. Well, it was just, I don't know. It was weird. I was thrown off by it because I was confused. And, but I with don't know. everything that was going on in this movie, that's what y'all noticed. <laughs> I, I did notice some details like accents. I love accents. Thor is out there whooping literally every ass in Wakanda. Yeah. And y'all are hung up on an accent. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> so can we talk about the hardest part of this movie? Like, the moment, like, I mean, I was all in to begin with, but I was, I didn't know I could go more all in until this moment. Thor, Tree, and Rabbit, as they <laughs> know, <laughs> be known, yeah. arrive in Wakanda like straight badasses. Yeah. Thor yeah. runs and yells, bring me Thanos. Yeah. That is the <laughs> hardest line in the entire MCU. I, I think Thor is now my favorite Avenger of the current lineup in the movies because he's actually useful. I feel like before he was kind of a bore. Like his movies yeah, aren't they, that great. He was he was really underused in like the first Avengers and even Age of Ultron. They used him a little more, but, and, but after he just Ragnarok, dipped out in Civil War. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, they kind of explained that yeah. laughably in Ragnarok. Which well, how he, good was Thor Ragnarok, guys? It was great. Oh, and like but he <laughs> you didn't like it? I didn't see it. Oh, oh no. Uh, what? I know. So you I started this movie, yet. you're like, wait, Thor's missing an eye and he's got no, a haircut? No, I knew. <laughs> I figured it. I knew that. Like, mm-hmm. well, you were watching it that one day at the apartment and mm-hmm. I saw it and I watched some of it mm-hmm. when you were watching it. So I've like, I don't know. I figured. I put it together. Yeah. But what I was oh. going to say is that like with Thor, he had such a emotional like little arc this oh movie. Oh my yeah. God. And it was, it dude. really made you like look at him in a different light. And I think that's a huge point about his character yeah like you were saying before he was kind of this he was more funny and like the pretty boy and like that whole thing with uh star lord and him was hilarious yeah. <laughs> i was dying oh absolutely it was so funny and then Dude. he gets all emotional and you're like oh my gosh yeah, wait the I scene with the scene with rocket is that what you're talking about oh where he's yeah wait, i think oh my god you're, you're Dude, jesse's man, talking about me. when they're when star lord's trying to act like just as tough wait, and when manly he starts as... doing the low voice he's like this is just my <laughs> oh, voice no, no. No, no when he gets emotional though when he's talking to oh. rocket though when he's yeah. like you know i've killed my brother's dead people, my blah, sister's blah, blah, dead blah, my blah, father's blah. dead <laughs> he's like you know what else could i possibly lose i was like oh Shit. And then, yeah, and that's why, oh, that and that, that moment where he's like, bring me Thanos is so, yeah. like, connective because plus, it's so, yeah. Plus he's got, like, his super Thor powers. Like, I'm all in on lightning Thor. <laughs> I know, and the new oh, hammer he is, went like. full Raiden. Yeah. Oh, he's, yeah, he's, uh, was he's officially Raiden. Yeah. Um, so I guess. Oh, and that, and Stormbreaker is the coolest. Like, it took, it takes the full blunt of a full 
Infinity Gauntlet? Nah. Fuck yeah. it. Cuts through it like butter. Yeah. Right um, so let's talk about who yeah. is. God, this movie was awesome. <laughs> let's, let's let's talk about who is quote unquote dead. Um, um, I think the biggest everyone. Yeah, I think the <laughs> the biggest one that I noticed, of course, is I mean, not noticed, but the biggest one that's the most emotionally hitting is Spider Man, right? Yeah, and something I didn't really it didn't really click until my second or third viewing. Like everyone else is just kind of like. Oh shit! I'm turning to dust. What the hell? He's the only one because of his spider sense. Yeah. That feel well, like Mantis kind of picks up on it too, but like they really drive it home with well, Spider Man. I actually like, being able to sense something happening. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, I read about that online too, but I also read now. I don't know if this is true or not, but I read that Tom Holland improvised some of those lines to make it more emotional. So I, I don't know if, like, he improvised the, like, I can feel it, like, this feels weird or, or this hurts. I think he just, I don't know which part he well, improvised, but I read that he... So you're, so you're just actively trying to make me fall more in love with Tom Holland? Uh, well... <laughs> That's what's happening? Uh, yeah. I like the, know, spi- the Spidey I, sense is a good, is a good, like, drawing, connecting the dots there. Right. I like, I like I, that. Yeah, and I, I believe know, I, that, too. That broke my heart. Yeah, that's that's well, the part in oh the theater where it was dead silent. I for knew us. when they were panning the camera over after it was Mantis that went, I think, and mm-hmm. then they panned the camera over, and I was saying out loud, I was like, "Don't do it! Don't you do it!" And then they did it, and I was crying, full on tears down my face. It was great. Yeah. Um, so oh, my count, I've got Spider Man, I've got Falcon, yes. Bucky, yep. Star Lord. Groot, Drax, Scarlet Witch, Mantis, Nick Fury, Doctor Strange, and Black Panther is like the bi- yeah. the big ones. Um, yeah. And oh my dude, it was so funny. And whenever I saw it in theater, there there were two people behind me. One of them, when Black Panther faded away, one of them yelled, "Oh, not T'Challa!" <laughs> <laughs> and another one goes, literally stood up, put their hands up, and goes, "My king." <laughs> yeah, um, Honda forever. It was amazing. I know. I noticed somebody pointed out online too that basically the the main ones that go are the ones that are the newest mm-hmm. and therefore have to come back because we of course we're gonna get Black Panther two. We're gonna get Spider Man two. Um, Guardians. Uh, te- go- technically speaking, Black Panther two has not been confirmed. No, but it's on. Oh, it's it's gonna definitely happen. gonna be on their it's slate. Gotta. The the only confirmed Guardians thing three after Avengers four. Is Guardians three and Spider Man two? Yeah, um, but there's also this officially. There's also this theory that the ones that were still left alive this time are all the original Avengers. That oh yeah, most of them are going to die in the next one to make way for the new. Because right. let's see, you got yeah, you got Cap, Iron Man, Nebula, uh, Scarlet, uh, not Scarlet Witch, uh, Black Widow, Hulk, Black Widow, Hulk, Thor, Thor, and Rocket. Yep. And oh and man, the- Jesse, I just realized you haven't seen Thor Ragnarok. I have. So, y- no, no, she has. Oh yeah, Jesse hasn't now. Yeah. So you didn't have the burning question the entire movie of where the fuck is Korg? Yeah, <laughs> that's uh, Taiki Watiti's character in uh, Thor Ragnarok. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Because that's all I was thinking. I was like, oh god, I hope he's okay. Oh, you know what? I forgot to include too. Uh, in my who's actually dead is uh, the Collector, uh, Benicio del Toro. Oh, yeah. He's for sure oh, dead. Yeah. Oh, like we didn't yeah. technically see him die, but he's I mean, dead. He, th- he's dead. <laughs> oh, Which yeah. did you notice the Arrested Development? I did the uh, the blue the blue mannequin. The blue man, Tobias Funke in there, <laughs> and like it's the best part is that it's like they credit it in the credits. Yeah. <laughs> Which because a bunch of people in my theater were like characters from Arrested Development. What? And I was like, nice. Oh yeah, Groot. Well, funny you should mention that, Mally. I have a new contest code this week for our listeners, where they can win a free Blu-ray. What do you think about that? I am Groot. Okay, so you can go on reddit.com slash r slash silver linings playlist right now. Go to the official discussion thread for this film, Avengers Infinity War, and as a comment, you can leave this code that I'm about to give you, and we'll randomly pick uh, a winner from the people that comment. So the new code for this week is simply... I am Steve Rogers. So, I am Groot. So put that in as a comment, and uh, we'll randomly select a person and get in touch with you to send you out some free stuff. That simple. I am Groot. Okay. <laughs> so the post credit scene, you know, we've got uh, Nick Fury making this page to... Oh, and what's your face? Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah. No, that's... 
her character. I don't. I couldn't tell you her name. <laughs> um, I, I don't know. Making a, a call, essentially what, a page. Kobe Smolders? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. um, making That's a page. Robin guys from How I Met That's Your Mother. That's why I said Robin. <laughs> I know. Um, making a page to a character that we're not familiar with that I had to look it up. Dun, 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 dun. Really? Yeah, I, I, I couldn't it, tell. It is, le- it is technically lesser known. Um, fun fact. So the character Dustin is talking about is Captain Marvel, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. who is being played by Brie Larson. Love her. The movie comes out in February, I believe. And set in the 90s, um, which is why they use a pager, yeah. which is it's dope. It's actually shooting right oh. now. Fun fact, my roommate is currently on that film right now. Awesome. Oh, that's cool. So I'm psyched. Um, that movie's going to rule. I, I'm not. I love, and they're bringing back, like, uh, what's the, the villain from Guardians of the Galaxy 1, running the Accuser, they're bringing him back. Oh, right. okay. They're bringing uh, a younger Samuel L. Jackson. Hmm. And mm-hmm. Um, who else? Um, the dude that got killed in the first Avengers that has that ABC TV show now. Uh, you know what I got to think back to Avengers 1. I've only seen it a couple times. Um, the guy, like, he gets stabbed, and then they bring him back in that ABC Oh. Agent of Shield. So. Oh, um, Coulson. Coulson. Col- oh, Agent Coulson. Okay. Yeah. Apparently, yeah. he's going to be in Captain Marvel too, since it's in the nineties. So I'm not. So I'm not too familiar movie, with her that powers. That movie's going to be fucking wild. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm not familiar she with her either. Is awesome. <laughs> and I know so in the comic like books, a, Captain Marvel is she pretty was strong. Like an Air Fo- she was an Air Force pilot who gets mixed up with um, this alien named Marvel, mm-hmm. who mm-hmm. is a Kree, which was Ronan the Accuser's race yeah. in Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, and it's been hinted that the Kree skull scroll war is going to be part of the movie. Yeah. I, that's not confirmed, but it's been hinted at, which is a big thing in the comic books yeah. that I'm not going to explain right now. Cause I'd be here for hours. <laughs> um, and then like she gets, and Marvel is actually being played by dude law, which is going to be rad. Cause dude, the MCU gets great people in these movies. Yeah. Their casting is always top notch. Like Brie Larson, Samuel L. Jackson, Jude law in one movie. Like I'm in. Um, but anyway, she ends up getting a bunch of powers. She can like fly and go in space and shoot energy blast, and it's just all around a badass. So my question is, it's it's pretty heavily alluded to that Tony's going to be the one to save the day for the most part in the next movie. Um, but from what I read, is that Captain Marvel plays a huge role in it too. So I'm wondering how she fits in versus this Tony arc that they're trying to build because. I like I said, I'm not too familiar with her powers, so I don't know exactly what Captain Marvel can bring to the table that all the Avengers together couldn't accomplish. Um, I mean, in the comics, she is literally th- probably the most powerful character, really. Okay. Um, so it's definitely gonna even the playing field a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, because I mean, outside like. I mean, if you really think about it, power wise, I mean, especially with like Doctor Strange gone, because Doctor can we Doctor Strange whooped ass in this movie, yeah, by the way. Yeah. Um, they really like they're strong they're heavy hitters, Thor. Mm-hmm. Um, which don't get me wrong, he obviously hits very heavy. He fucking took on Thanos no problem at the end. Mm-hmm. But they're really behind like they're really, really limited now. Um, like no hawk, all that nonsense. Um, so bringing Captain Marvel, it's going to be like, hey, look, power boost. Because, um, again, I don't know if they're, they'll nerf her powers at all, like they kind of did early Thor movies. Mm-hmm. But in the comics, like, Captain Marvel is a, str- like, she's definitely up there with, like, where Thor is right now of just, like, beating ass. Okay. Um, How they tie her in from the 90s to now, I don't know. That's going to be very interesting. Mm-hmm. Like, why, if Nick Fury could contact her this whole time, why didn't he do it, you know, yeah. when aliens attack New York? Yeah. Or when, you know, a murder bot tried to destroy the world. Yeah. But whatever. Um, hmm. I, I guess I want to talk more about the ending just because there's so many theories running around and everyone's pretty much saying, oh, the Time Stone can undo all of this, which, yes, but again, I don't. I did, like you've mentioned nerfing powers. I don't know how they can – I'm wondering what they're, what they're going to set the limit to, like how far back the time stone can go. Well, see how – see, that's my problem with being like, oh, they can use the time stone. How? They don't have it. No. Well, I guess and the implied even, is – Even d- 
Doctor Strange said there's only one way Mm -hmm. that we win, and then he just straight gives up the time stone to Thanos. So that has to be the way, then. That's the plan. That's what I'm saying. The plan is he saw... He makes a comment early that I will save the stone over you, Tony, but when it comes down to it, he switches, implying that Tony is is the key to something, and he has to give the time stone to Thanos. So I'm guessing the plan is just to get to Thanos, get the glove from him, uh, get the gauntlet from him, and then somehow use the time stone to reverse it, right? How, though? I don't know. Somebody's how? Maybe Tony's going to have to wield the gauntlet. Oh. Oh. No, dude. There's no way a human is wielding the gauntlet. Look, man. Uh, Star Lord. Star Lord no. was able to hold a stone. So he's he was fifty percent celestial. Maybe that's how Tony ends up dying. Is he tries to wield the gauntlet and ends up killing him in the process? He's. I guess I don't know. I don't, I don't, dude, if they if they let a human wield the gauntlet, like okay, yes, they gave they let Star Lord hold one Infinity Stone. For a little bit mm-hmm. without it killing him, mm-hmm. but he is also half celestial. Yeah, Tony Stark is just a dude. Well, that's that's this is what I'm thinking. I'm I'm thinking like literally touching an Infinity Stone would kill a human being. I'm thinking the, the easy. I am such a nerd. For <laughs> the stone. I'm thinking the easy go to is the Time Stone, but I'm also thinking what would be more interesting. So I'm thinking, what about the Reality Stone? Using that to adjust reality because. It's almost like a facade, right? Like the way See, again, it's my problem with the theories revol- like it's not so much that I have a problem with the theories being like, oh, they could use the reality stone. They could use the time stone. That's not what like I don't feel You're wondering like how gonna, physically they can do it. Like how are they going to get to those stones? That's that's the interesting part to me. Like mm-hmm. I don't give a shit how they like you want to use the time stone to fix everything? Cool, go for it. Reality stone? Cool, go for it. Soul stone, whatever. Time I, use the stones all you want. How do they get them back? I have mm-hmm. a theory, but I know it's probably not going to play out this way. I just think it would be a really cool yeah. way to do it. Let's hear it because I love it when Dustin has theories. I think Ant Man could be a huge, like, uh, like a like just a, a special trick they could use is use Ant Man because uh, did you ever see do I see the Ant Man movie? I didn't watch it. Okay, Ant-Man Mally, did you too. see Ant Man? Oh yeah, so much fun. So and the trailer for the second one just dro- like mm-hmm. the full length trailer just dropped the other day, and it looks like so much fun. Like the Wasp. Spoilers. Yeah, and the Wasp. Yeah. yeah. Um, spoilers. I almost was gonna suggest the next Ant Man movie as my pick me up film because it's literally the MCU's pick me up film for Infinity War because they released <laughs> yeah. it two months later. <laughs> um. Well, in they did the same thing with the first Ant Man. If you haven't seen the Ant Man film, basically Ant Man's powers is he can shrink obviously down to the size of an ant, but he can he can also go even smaller down to like the molecular atomic level. Right. But there's this thing where if he gets too small, there's a possibility he can't come back. Called uh, the quantum realm, which is basically oh. the microverse used in the comic books. They just don't have the rights to the name. And they introduced a lot of the other realm stuff in Doctor Strange, too. So mm-hmm. I think it'd be cool if somehow Ant-Man could trap Thanos in the microverse. Because um, I think that's oh. a super useful fucking tool that they haven't used yet. And it would be nice for them to... They could always put Thanos on the back burner and have him well, come back another time. Um, and they have said... They they said they... Because a lot of people were like, oh, why does... Um, why you know why is it Infinity War, Ant Man, Captain Marvel, then Part Two? Yeah. Well, like I'm assuming both of those movies because it is con- like Captain Marvel takes place in the '90s. It's confirmed Ant Man and the Wasp takes place before Infinity War. Yeah. Oh. Like it takes place apparently in between Civil War and Infinity War at some point, I guess. Yeah. According to the magical place known as Reddit. Mm-hmm. Um. So, like, I don't know. Like, both of those movies have to tie into the next one somehow. Yeah. Like, I don't know how. Because, like, they've been billing, you know, Ant-Man and the Wasp as, like, you know, a heist movie. Or, like, the director at one point referred to it as, like, the MCU's first romantic comedy. Yeah. Which I don't know how I feel about that. But I'm in. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um. So, yeah, I'm very curious as to how they kind of tie Infinity War into those two movies and into Avengers 4. I mean, yeah, like I said, I'm I'm really curious about the different ways they could use the stones and the gauntlet. I think I think the time stone is the most boring 
like answer to it because it's the most obvious. It's the one everyone's expecting. Yeah. I would like to see the reality stone or Ant Man being used, or even the Soul Stone. I think it'd be cool if like they somehow. Oh, dude, I want to know more about the Soul Stone because all the Soul Stone stuff in this movie was so rad. Yeah, we'll talk about we'll talk about that in a second. But I also want to know who who are you putting your money on, Mally? For of the big three, Cap, Iron Man, and Thor. Who do you think is going to die? Because I'm putting my money on Tony. You think just one? Is That's a good die? point, too. Mm. I don't know. I think Thor and Cap might go. I mean, uh, uh, Iron Man and Cap might go. Yeah, that's what I, I think. I'd say, I don't, I don't think they would kill off Thor, because especially, like, with, like, the steam he got from Ragnarok and now Infinity War, like, if that, I don't know, like, if they planned at one point to kill Thor, I think they might change that now because of how well-received Ragnarok was. Yeah. Like, same, like... The trailers for Infinity War, like, especially after Black Panther was such a success, they were like, uh, put Wakanda in the trailers as much as possible. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, which was great marketing on their part. Um, so I don't know. I don't think they would kill Thor off. Um, unless, like, it's too late in the game for them to change their plan, because they did, for the most part, um, shoot Avengers 4 already, yeah. which is crazy to me, too. That, like, Avengers 4 is pretty much already done, and they're literally just sitting on it. Yeah. Like, that's <laughs> nuts. Um, um, well, then who... They kind of Lord of the Rings did. If, you, if you're not going to do that, who do you, who else amongst the, the entire group, who do you think should die? Because... I mean, I could definitely see Iron Man or Cap mm-hmm. going out. Yeah. Um, I don't know if they would take out both of them. Mm-hmm. Um... I, 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 I don't know. I can't call it between the two. I don't know which one. Like, I... I gotta say, though, I felt a little man, cheated. I don't, that's a tough call. I felt a little cheated when Iron Man made it out alive in this movie. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I thought he was done for. Once he gets stabbed, I'm like, this is it. This is the moment that they've been culminating for, for a decade. You know, this would make... This would be a fitting way for him to go. This would make sense. It would be heroic. It would give everyone else the, you know, the energy to keep to fight harder, like the adrenaline rush. But I'm I'm kind of on the fence about how it turned out. It dep- I guess it depends really just how the next movie plays it out. But I feel like Tony's got to die. They've got to make that moment where he almost died in this one pay off. You know what I mean? Huh. I, I mean, I really enjoyed the scene of him and Peter together at the end, but I like... I don't know if that moment outweighs a moment of where he dies if it would have made it more enjoyable, like made it more impactful. And as far as the other Avengers go, I'm kind of – I've been an advocate that War Machine should have died in Civil War. That was a cheap way to keep him around and I feel like yeah, – Yeah, I'm – sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say it would have made that fight between Bucky, Tony, and uh, Cap more interesting if War Machine did die. During Civil War, yeah, I I'm so glad we got to see because that's the word that was like the bad thing about every other thing with War Machine because like the dude's not built to you know incapacitate War Machine's built to destroy some motherfuckers. Yeah, <laughs> him and Falcon so, like, fuck some people up in this movie. <laughs> oh my g- dude, just that shot of him just carpet bombing the Outriders. <laughs> I was like, this is so fucking rad. <laughs> And then, you know, he takes a hammer to the face. Yeah. But still, that was, like, just seeing, like, that whole Wakanda, like, battle was, like, everyone got awesome moments. Mm. Um, I love the little bit where, like, um, Scarlet Witch finally jumps down, just wrecks some motherfuckers. And uh, what's her name? Oh, I'm going to butcher her name. Okanye, I think. It's just like, why was she up there this whole time? Yeah. <laughs> that This movie, I... I as like dark and like sad and emotional as this movie was, one of the funniest films. I in the was gonna MCU. say that too. I really I'm, was impressed with how funny it actually was. What, what was your favorite joke? So funny. Um, I really love. I love the running joke of Thor calling Rocket Rabbit yeah. and Groot Tree. <laughs> um, one of the biggest laughs though was, um, the little Thor cap exchange like. Uh, oh, a new haircut. I oh. see you've copied my beard. Oh, by the way, this is my friend Tree. Yeah. <laughs> I am Groot. I am Steve Rogers. Yes. <laughs> I am yeah. Steve that Rogers was great. That whole exchange got <laughs> such a big reaction. Like, there were just so much 
so many moments. Everything between, um, like, um, the Guardians and Avengers when they first meet. Just like, it's like, yeah, oh, you bless my guy, I'll shoot him. Wait, I can take it. We you have can't to talk take about, it. She's um, right, you can't take it. <laughs> what is it? What does she say? We, uh... Kick names, take ass. Kick names, take ass, man. Oh I almost forgot about that. That was the best. Like, yeah, pretty much all the I Guardians were really good this they movie. They were so funny. And I mean, Chris Pratt I, is hilarious. He has, he's such a comedic. I thought, I thought Drax was, was oh stole the God. show in every Drax scene he was in. steals the, every the scene he's in. The nuts thing that he was oh, eating yeah. or whatever. Oh, he's like, I've mastered the art of being <laughs> invisible. <laughs> that was well, great, too. I, you uh, you mentioned the Mantis line. I yeah. See, I liked her line, but I loved Drax's reaction to it. Like, she says it, obviously not the phrase. It's like, we kick names and take ass. He's like, yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> I liked, um. Like, he just completely agrees with yeah. her. I liked pretty much every line Star-Lord had where he I calls Thanos' his chin a nutsack. He calls him Grimace. Um, oh, God. I really um, I really loved when he flips him off as he's falling through Doctor Strange's portal. He gives him the double bird. That was amazing. <laughs> B- I will say, biggest laugh early in the film Iron Man referring to Ebony Maw as Squidward. Yeah, that was a good one. <laughs> I died at that. And also the constant references to Doc- Iron Man calling Doctor Strange a wizard. Yep. Those were all great. Um, I liked, I liked again, uh, what's her name, Denai Guerrera from the, the girl that plays the Wakandan warrior. So when she From the one from Walking yeah, Dead. Yeah, yeah, whenever. Yeah, that's who I was trying to, I think, Okanya? I, think I, 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 don't I don't know how to pronounce her name. But whenever she goes... When you th- when you said you were going to open up Wakanda to the outside world, this isn't what I thought you meant. Oh. And T'Challa was like, "What do you think of that?" And she goes, "I don't know, maybe the Olympics." <laughs> I had a good line. Starbucks? Starbucks? Maybe a Starbucks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that, that was, was good. funny. That was, that was a good line. I honestly, I cried with like laughing so hard the whole Chris Pratt. I mean, Star Lord and Thor. Yeah. When he was like, "This is my voice," oh, I was that crying. Was that part like made me laugh really, really hard. But I think the take names or. Take, take names, take ass was I liked that one. <laughs> that, I don't know. They, the, Ro- the Russo brothers are pretty good of emulating other people's style. They got Sean, Sean Gunn's uh, comedic timing and his jokes in there pretty well. You mean James Gunn? James Gunn. What did I say? Yeah. Uh, Sean. Gunn, Sean. Oh, I'm thinking his, his brother. brother. Yeah, yeah. Who, who is the onset yeah. rocket? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, and they actually brought that was something I love. Like that's one of the best things about the MCU. They actually had James Gunn come in and consult on all the Guardian scenes. They had um, the director from Black Panther come in and, you know, um, consult on the Wakandan scenes. Yeah, like Ryan they brought in the other direct. Yeah. They huh. brought in the other directors to be like, does this flow? Yeah. Like, does this work? And, like, they actually had to do a lot of reworking of Thor's dialogue to suit the new kind of Thor, like, funnier, awesome Thor yeah. of Ragnarok. Yeah, yeah. They had to rework a lot of his dialogue, apparently. So what was the most and what was the most surprising part for you, Malik? Because I got to say, when we get to the Soul Stone, uh, I didn't hear a bigger gasp in the movie until then when fucking Red, Red Skull, Skull shows up. showed up. <laughs> Holy shit! What a great way to like bring that um, character back. Perfect, perfect. Yeah. You could not have like I feel like bringing any bringing him back any other way. Stupid. That ama- I never would have thought of that. Mm-hmm. And it was just so perfect because there was like a little moment where you're like, is that? Yeah. And then like yeah, they reveal him and just like literally the collective gasp yeah. in the theater. Just like, oh. I thought they were going to go with – because they didn't reveal his face for a while. I thought they were going to go with that being death and that being like Thanos's like in the comic, Thanos's driving motivation is to – to court death, basically. Which I love yeah. that they didn't do that. Yeah, it would have been a little I cheesy. I loved his motive. I like, Okay. Did anyone else start rooting for Thanos at one point? Or at least start feeling for him a lot? They, like, they do a fairly I was good so job. Empathetic yeah, for they him. do a fairly good job of making him a, an empathetic villain. Like, like I still am after, unclear why he's doing it. I mean, I get what he's doing and his... Uh, explanation of it but it still feels a little weird that i don't really know what his end goal is other than like i get it he wants to murder half of the universe but for why like he says it's to like uh basically help with like overpopulation and stuff like that but yeah because he's he's seen it he saw it on his own planet he's seen it throughout the universe and so he feels and like that's what i love like in 
Thanos, like you can say this about a lot of villains, but I actually believe it for Thanos. He he fully believes what he's doing is right. Like, yeah. and they show that. Like, he knows. Like, it's you know it you know it is he knows that he's committing genocide. Like he's fully aware of the consequences, but he feels in the deepest depths of his heart and mind that what he's doing is absolutely necessary. And that's what I love. He show like I love that he shows respect to um a few like. Like he shows respect to Star Lord and Scarlet Witch and Stark as well. Being a, yeah, for being able to sacrifice as like because you know he literally it kind of pushes Star Lord to kill Gamora and obviously he was just testing him, mm-hmm. but he's just you know hmm, I like you and then after he would watches Scarlet Witch kill her love. Oh my god. Vision, <laughs> that dude that was brutal I will c- also just goes to show how powerful she actually is yeah mm-hmm. she's destroying an infinity stone also holding back thanos yeah we gotta circle back around to that part because i definitely want to talk about scarlet witch but i think um, my issue is that i wish they would have in the post credit scenes and all the other times you've seen thanos up to this point they would have better explained his motivations then because it feels like they kind of dropped the ball in this movie like this is what his motivation is now let's run with it like yeah and in all of his other scenes you never really get that you just kind of get that he's like this imposing force this impending doom that's approaching them and never really explained why um i will say um going back to kind of feeling for the villain though like that after the snap when it cuts to him which it in my head, it seems like he's in the soul realm, which... That's what a lot of people have said, yeah. Like, yeah, going back to comic book stuff, like, the soul stone actually has its own kind of dimension mm-hmm. inside of itself where the souls are kept. Um, so I, I kind of do buy into, like, he's actually communicating with Gamora's soul that is inside the stone. Yeah. Um, like, that scene, like... Like, in the back of my head, I was like, oh, don't worry, buddy, you did it. <laughs> and like then I kind of like then I kind of snapped out of it. I was like, oh wait, no, wait, no, I don't want to root for him. Shit. Um, I gotta say though, after seeing this movie and thinking about it, I feel like Star Lord is the real villain of the movie. <laughs> oh my god. Because I feel God. like he he had several chances. And just drop the ball every time. <laughs> perfectly in line. Per, no, no, it's in it's, line, it's with, in his line with his character. Don't get me wrong. Like, but that's true. I. Go go back to Guardians Two when Ego is like you both saw Guardians Two, right? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Radical. <laughs> um, so like when Ego's like we can rule the galaxy, and his eyes are doing like the crazy star shit, which was a, just rad all around. Mm-hmm. And then the moment he's like, "Oh, I killed your mother," he snaps out of it, shoots shoots his dad in the face. Yep. Yeah. Like the moment. It was so, like, really a raw emotion. Mm-hmm. Because he knew yeah. Gamora was dead, and I really liked that. I just from felt like him. he, could, yeah, like it, it, it sucks that like he ruined their plan, but like right. that he, it would have been weird if that character had reacted a different. I, way. Let me, let me. I should say I don't fault the movie. I like that they did that. It's the best thing to do, and I loved that moment. It just feels like man, you really like as the character itself, you really dropped the ball. <laughs> and I feel like right. rather than just punching Thanos, who is literally a god, like you could have just like shot him in the face. You could have done something useful other than just <laughs> He's just it's like the love. Thanos is I not a god. He's just He's it, with the when he has the stones, he's essentially a god. <laughs> he ain't have all of them then though, did he? True. That's true, but he's a very strong dude. <laughs> oh, <so. yes. laughs> dude, I love that they actually get really close to defeating him right there. Like that mm-hmm. was awesome. Yeah, but it's but it's. I mean, you know, it's not going to happen. It's That's like the problem all those with movies. movies. You're yeah. like, oh, it's about and you're. It's oh, we're now we're in. Okay, it's not. You know, it's not. <laughs> yeah. Um, I gotta say another thing too that I liked about this movie. Something you don't really see a whole lot with Marvel movies is. Just some good cinematography. Like, I mean, the movies are usually shot very well, but they're kind of... Oh, beautiful. They're always criticized as being kind of bubblegum pop movies. Yeah. Like, mm. But I really liked uh, when Thor is trying to reignite, reignite the star and he's holding yeah. open the iris. It is so reminiscent of like a, ren- ren- a renaissance sculpture, like the discus thrower. Yeah. It's a really... Like, I would like to have that just like blown up and put on a fra- put in a frame and mounted on my Dude. wall. <laughs> I think it was starting with Guardians 2 where, like, I don't know, the, their cinematography and their um, color grading mm-hmm. got so much better. Yeah. 
like Guardians 2, Doctor Strange, um, oh. Thor, Ragnarok, Black Panther, and this are just like color. If, Boom, if you go back and color. look at the first Avengers movie, it is Framing, almost laughable. Like, oh, yeah. it's, the, yeah, the, it's not the coloring and the costumes, everything looks really dated. Um, Dude, even like Civil War, like the color palette in Civil War, like I love Civil War, but the color palette is bland as mm-hmm. hell. Yep. But like all like the Phase Three movies have just been like awesome. Yeah. Although, well, Civil War was the start of Phase Three, but that's anyway. Um, the last kind of little thing I I have to talk about before we uh, wrap it up and get into silver linings, unless you guys have other things. Um, I could literally just talk about <laughs> little details of this movie for the next four to five hours. I was just gonna say I thought it was an interesting choice to end on a shot of Thanos versus. Um, literally anything else. Just and anybody's I face don't, after that. I don't. He was the main character of this movie. It is his movie. It's kind of like... This, this is Thanos' movie. It's, it's like his Dark Knight, whereas mm-hmm. the Dark Knight was the Joker's movie. Um, but it, yeah. it's he's he's very satisfied. Like, you don't get any trace of, like... It, he feel, It looks like he's more exhausted than anything. Yeah. Or he's just... Yeah, it's like at peace almost. He's just like... No. Okay. And where where is he at, Mally? Do you know? Um, they, it's just somewhere. It's a great callback to the comics though. Cause in the comics after Thanos does this whole snap, he actually just retires and becomes a farmer. Really? <laughs> um, so yeah, like if you look at that scene, um, when he's walking out of the little hut, if you look in the bed, you can kind of barely see it, but there's a scarecrow and it's actually wearing his armor, which is straight out of the comics. Hmm. Oh, okay. Uh, but yeah, and I like I doubt he's actually like farming in the MCU. But no, in the comics, he just showed up like, yep, killed half the universe. So uh, yeah, my job's done. I'm going to hmm. retire and farm now. So I guess they're just probably it's probably for the best, but I guess they're just not really going to introduce the concept of death as a character, which is fine. Again, good. Yeah, it's fine. It's it would be a little cheesy for this whole thing to be because of a romance. So I'm I'm I like the way this movie this movie felt. It felt I've seen a lot of people complain that it's because it's a part one that it doesn't feel like a complete movie, but I I think it does. I I liked every. I, it was impressive how much emotion and how many characters got that beat in this movie like every character had a moment and that's super impressive when you have this many this many characters in one movie um but yeah Mally, do you have anything else uh you want to cover before we talk about our silver linings again i will just sit here and talk about tiny little well you got you got some time man if you got something else you want to drop on us i mean i'm just saying (laughs) all right jesse is there anything else? i will literally talk about if you let me go, we'll be here for a while. I just, the uh, just Peter is the thing that just like really gets me. No, yeah. and I just yeah. Also, while well, we talked about Cap's beard, because that moment I like freaked out. <laughs> I was like, oh my god, it was yeah. it was a great entrance. I saw a, oh so badass. I saw a mention too so that badass. they could always do a time jump before they go into the next movie and like see what life is like. With half the world gone, like yeah. maybe like oh, a, a yeah. couple years, that would be. Whoa. I would like to see that, that versus like a direct continuation, like the second it happens. I think I would like to see more of like that kind of thing happen. Also, right. I gotta say, what I'm really looking, I guess we should talk about what we're looking forward to in the next movie. Um, the fight scene on Titan with Star Lord and Drax, Doctor Strange and Stark and Spider Man versus Thanos is more of what I was looking for in this movie. Like mm. the combined oh, that effort, was so cool. Like mm-hmm. Spider Man swinging through Strange's portals and kicking him, and while while yelling magic kick, and Strange is doing <laughs> the multi man and the mirror verse fighting him. Yeah, like I want okay. more of that. That Thor or that uh, Thanos versus Doctor Strange fight. Was so rad with him turning the mirror like, verse and the I, butterflies. Like, I, I'm so gl- I'm so glad that there was a time like a bit like time jump a little between Doctor Strange in this movie to show like how much he's progressed because he like Doctor Strange was just like like I believed him as the Sorcerer Supreme in this movie like yeah. he was an absolute like I would say biggest heavy hitters in the MCU right now. Well. Okay, sorry, going into this movie, because they're all dead. Mm-hmm. Um, Doctor Strange and Thor. Yeah. like And, just, and Scarlet. Scarlet Witch. And Scarlet Witch, yes. 
Um, just complete and total ass beaters. Mm-hmm. Like, amazing. And also, uh, how, all right, question. How did you guys feel about uh, the new Iron Man armor? Um, I don't know if I like the, the, uh, the core as much. I don't like, I don't know if I like the design. I still am a big fan of the original, just the, yeah. the open, uh, core right in the middle of the chest, but yeah. I get it. I mean, they got to just like, it same thing with Iron Spider, uh, Iron Spidey. I'm, I'm okay with it. It's fine. I guess that, I did. I did, I like, did like, uh, I did like the Iron Spider yeah. suit. That was pretty good. I, oh my God. They actually included the fucking legs from the comics yeah. too. Yeah. That was, <laughs> that, that was super so crazy. It was a little was weird, cool. but I I, like, I've been to it. Creeped out like, a little I bit. Love, but it was great. Like they come out, he catches Dr. Strange. He's, he just looks at the legs. What are those? Yeah. <laughs> Um, like, oh, that was so cool. But yeah, I, I did like how like the suit kind of repaired itself, but you saw that it did have a limit because by the end of his fight with Thanos, yeah. he literally has like yeah. part of his chest on yeah. a little bit of leg and like that dagger that he ends up getting stabbed with. Like it shows like part of the leg moving up to form a new headpiece. Like I love that little bit. Question um, was and showed. I, I just like that they showed that like while the suit was self like could self repair itself, mm-hmm. it wasn't like infinite. Question: mm-hmm. it, Was Tony left alone on Titan? Because I think everybody he came with, uh, I think no, no, Nebula was still there. Okay, oh. so Nebula. okay, you're right, you're right. Um, uh, that, which yeah. I love the recurring motif with Nebula of she just shows up and crashes ships into people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She does that in Guardians, Guardians 2, and this movie. Speaking of Nebula, um, man, like, her character is playing the long game and is the most torturous out of all of these characters in these movies. Oh, my God. Like... Dude, I felt... Dude, when they showed her, like, being tortured, I was like, oh, this is fucked up. Yeah, this whole... I don't like yeah. this at all. She, her char- She's gonna have some redeeming thing in the next movie where she's gotta have some big moment. Um... But another thing I want to talk about, too, before we wrap up is Scarlet Witch being the emotional punching bag in this whole movie because holy shit. Not only is she forced to kill her lover by literally destroying what's essentially his brain. Yeah. Yeah. She does that, sacrificing him (laughs) only to have Thanos bring him back to life, murder him in front of her, and then she dies. (laughs) Oh yeah, yeah dude. That, that is painful. heavy. Painful. I love that they made um, Scarlet Witch such a big part of this movie because that was my big like. I loved her. Mm-hmm. I also have a massive crush on Elizabeth Olsen. Same. <laughs> um, honestly, who doesn't? Mm-hmm. She's like the female Tom Holland. Mm-hmm. Anyway, um, that was a weird. <laughs> there was a weird lull in there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, anyway, now I'm just thinking about Tom Holland again. Um, okay. Um, like I loved her in Age of Ultron. Um, she didn't get a lot to do in Civil War. I did love the little moment she did have in Civil War. Yeah. Um, and I'm like, she was such a big part of this movie, and I fucking loved it. The the only thing I really want to see in the next movie, um, you tread lightly, is is consequence. I really want consequence. I feel like they made a good step with this movie with killing off really pivotal characters because Marvel has a problem with not wanting to kill their darlings and them, True. them killing Loki and Gamora and Heimdall and vision are a good start, but wait, we have okay. Sorry. Finished your thing. Then well, I what I was going to say is I think it's, uh, is it age of Ultron where they have the vision? Scarlet, Witch gives people like visions of futures. Yeah. 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 I want to see the that vision. with Thanos where like, there's literally just dead bodies in a pile. I mean, if you think about it, like, as far, like, because the thing with uh, Wanda, Scarlet Witch, and Age of Ultron, she's not showing them the future. She's showing them their worst fears. Yeah. Mm. I, I want to see Tony Stark's that. worst fear is him being alive and all of his friends being dead. Yeah. And that's exactly where he's left at the end of this movie. That, uh, well, I want to see that visually represented again as, like, a, a motif, a callback. I want to see, like dead Avengers in a pile trying to fight Thanos. I want there to be actual consequences and real, just like I wanted War Machine to, to die in Civil War, not because I dislike his character, but because they built up that moment. You, you want to see, you want to see consequences. I want to see consequence. And I don't, Which, I don't think they're going to hold back with the next movie. I think this was like a test run for, to get you ready for it. Yeah. Um, all right. I have two things. Mm-hmm. One, 
Um. Wow, that Loki death was fucking brutal. Yeah. Yeah, that was they, the first like, moment I teared up. Holy shit! Uh, when that when that happened, I, I was like, I guess they're going for it. They're I, really doing this. Yeah. It's happening. Yeah. Like, dude. Like, yeah. They're just like, like, because I remember reading interviews with Kevin Feige, just being like, oh, don't worry. Like, within the first ten minutes of this movie, you're gonna see why Thanos is the scariest dude in the galaxy. Uh, yeah. Mm. No fucking shit. <laughs> like he just like I love Loki's like. You will never be a god. And then just snaps his neck. Yep. And then just drops him in front of Thor. Yeah. Like, look what you made me do. Not to mention Heimdall going out too, rescuing them. Oh, dude, so sad to see that. I love Heimdall. Like, he, God, he was, that's my biggest issue with the first two Thor movies. Um, Not enough Heimdall? Completely (laughs) not enough Heimdall. Um, He got a lot more to do in Ragnarok, which was rad, and I hate to see him go already. Yeah. Um, and then my other thing I wanted to talk about, um, was the Thanos, the Mart, I, I keep calling it the March of Thanos at the end when he arrives in Wakanda, mm-hmm. like, and just whoops ass. Yeah. Um, but my favorite thing, and it's another kind of ongoing thing in every Avengers film at some point, Captain America goes one-on-one with the main villain. He does it with Loki and Avengers. He does it with Ultron and Age of Ultron. And this one, like, he, I mean, don't get me wrong, he gets wrecked by Thanos. Yeah. But, like, he goes for it. Like, that is that is Steve Rogers right there. He's like, you have five Infinity Stones. I don't care. I'm going right. to try to stop yeah. you anyway. And that's, and that's like, why I thought Cap was going to die in this movie. I went into the theater thinking he was going to die. Yeah. Like, he's going to well, be gone. But and maybe the next after one. that, after that shot that was in, I think, the second trailer where they show him, like, stopping the gauntlet. Yeah. Um, I thought they were going to – I thought they might comic book it, which in the comics, um, like – Thanos, like a similar scene happens and Thanos just backhands Captain America and kills him. Jeez. Oh. That's, that's, that's how Cap goes out in the comics against Thanos. Just one, he just one hands him dead. I've slowly come. And yeah. when he and Thanos, like, after he's like, he's like, he's obviously toying with him. I don't think he expected like a human to be able to like withstand him like yeah. that. So he was kind of like, Oh, like, okay. Like I, like he almost like, again, Thanos has respect for people that are, like, willing to fight for what they believe in. Yeah. So, like, when he sees Captain America, like, trying to stop him, being just a human, he's kind of like, okay, like, I respect you, but I'm going to punch you in the face now. Um, and he just, like, one-hands him. I was like, oh, fuck, they just did it. And then he pops back up, and he's like, oh, I'm still alive. Yeah. But I got real worried for Cap and his glorious, glorious <laughs> hair and <laughs> beard. I've, I've slowly come to appreciate Captain America more as a character. Because I, I never I, – oh, I always d- thought he was kind of the least impressive out of all of them. But maybe maybe not as much as Black Widow and Hawkeye. But best. he is oh. a morally – like, the goody okay. two-shoes. Wasn't even Bro, in where this. Hawkeye? Yeah, where is Hawkeye? Well, he's, run me he, some Hawkeye. Somebody Gone. mentioned that, like, what if his family are the ones that died when they snapped his fingers, but he's still alive, and that would give him much more motivation to, to come, come back. come back for the second one. I kind of like that idea. Yeah, Plus, it would be nice to play uh, off what happened in uh, yeah. uh, Ultron in Civil, well, in Civil War, where he decided he didn't want to fight. It would kind of pay off for that. Like, he decided to retire, and then he gets called back in kind of thing. I, yeah... I don't know, like, I don't know, it's weird. He, he keeps retiring and keeps coming back. Yeah. Well, I mean, he He's doesn't like have Michael, much to it's do. It's like Michael Jordan's basketball career. I feel like him and Black <laughs> Widow don't have much to do. I mean, it's sad to Dude, say. I don't know, Black Widow kind of whooped some ass in this movie. My guess. I mean, if you scale it down. <laughs> well, okay. Um, the little everyone, trio. In their respective yeah. tiers, everyone whooped ass. Yes, yes, fair yeah. enough. Um, it's like there's, <clears> like, different, like, you know, uh... Weight categories. Yeah. Like yeah. yeah. Uh, Jesse, is there anything else you want to talk about before we talk about our silver linings? Oh. No, I don't think so. Okay. I don't think so. Mally. I'm not going first this time. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you always make me go first. Okay. So to recap. I'm already emotional. To recap uh, the ending of this movie, Thanos gets his power stones, <sighs> snaps his fingers, and literally half of the universe at random is dead. Um, wait, wait, real quick, real quick. Mm-hmm. So he gets all six stones, and then Thor shows up 
and throws his new axe into Thanos' chest. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. And then he says, should have gone we, for... We got to talk about... His, his face. Yeah, yeah. And, and then, like, and then that was the moment. Should have gone for the head. Yeah. I didn't know. And then he just snapped. Yeah. So he snaps his fingers. Literally half the universe is dead. The gauntlet and the stones are still, uh, still in existence. It just looks... From what I could tell, it just looked like the gauntlet had been severely damaged from the use yeah, of the stones. Yeah, because the gauntlet was made by the same dwarves, Peter Dink, a like twenty foot tall Peter Dinklage. Oh yeah, Peter we didn't Dinklage even talk in about this it. Fucking <laughs> movie, guys. The whole Peter audience. Peter fucking Dinklage is in this movie. Pretty great. Collective gasp when he came pretty, on. Pretty um, great. Uh, but yeah, so the dwarves, Peter Dinklage made the gauntlet for Thanos. Yeah. Which is rad. So, so the gauntlet's pretty much like it's all fucked up looking, but the stones are still there. So yeah, he snaps his fingers, uh half the and then dips. half the universe is wiped out, he disappears. Uh Doctor Strange pretty much tells Tony this is the only way. Yeah. We're in the end game now. Um, I loved I this is weird, but like I actually really I loved the way that they did kill everybody off. Because it was, it was such a like it was a heavy moment. Just yeah, it was it was so intense, oh, sure. and everyone just all of a sudden disappearing. And at first, I had no idea what was going on. I didn't on. either. It took me a second to realize, and when someone said he did it, I was like, oh, okay. I know. I was like, wait, wait, what? Well, why is this happening? And no. then I was like, no. And, you know, everyone, talks about, yeah. everyone talks about the Spider-Man and Iron Man moment, but I thought Black Panthers was really sad, too. Because yeah. he even yeah. says, Dude, this is no... All of them. He even says, this is no place to die, and then immediately dies. And her face, like, she was like... Yeah. Because oh, that's the she, second time oh she's God. lost. Fantastic him. acting. Yeah. Yeah. She looked horrified. Um, <clears throat> Bucky disappearing fucked me up. Yeah, because he crumbles. Dude, I'm, yeah. I yeah. am die hard. Yeah. Bucky. I'm in, I'm all in on Bucky I too. I love that man. Like I loved his little intro scene of them just being like the White Wolf, which I love that reference, which is another comic mm-hmm. book reference to Black Panther's brothers, mm-hmm. the White Wolf who leads the Wakandan police force. Anyway, oh. um, <laughs> Ooh, what's I that? know, mm. right? I know. Okay. Anyway, um, like, like the white wolf has rested long enough, and they just pull out the most badass looking vibranium arm, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. he just looks at it. He's like, "Where's the fight? <laughs> Bucky is fucking ride or die." <laughs> so yeah, Thanos kills half the world, and uh, then just goes and oh no no half the universe. Yes, I'm sorry, half the universe, and then half goes the and universe. rests on a planet, and that's how we end it. And then in the yeah. Hey, uh, in credits, mm-hmm. we get told that Thanos will return. Um, yeah, that yeah. was interesting. I loved how they did like the leftovers kind of thing with the post credit scene. And there's like a car that wrecks and no one's in it. And then a helicopter crashes and no one's yeah. in it. I've loved. I wanted to see like an entire movie from Nick Fury's perspective because I thought that was such cool visuals and a cool way to tell a story like that. Well, I hope they'll do that in the next one. Kind of give like some flashbacks, like yeah. as to where the people who weren't in this that movie where they cool. were at that moment. I would and love, who yeah, they yeah, lost yeah. Or... Like I would love them to do a time jump of like six years or something, and like yeah. show how right. the world's changed since everyone's died, and then maybe like flashbacks of immediately after, and like immediately after the fingers were snapped, and immediately mm-hmm. after the the credits rolled, how things changed. But I guess we'll see in a year. Uh, um, so yeah. Only a year though. That's oh not my bad. God, that's that's so it long. It feels so long. <laughs> it, do, it feels very long, but at least it's not two years. <laughs> All right. So well, that's true. <laughs> Mally, I avoided the obvious uh, silver lining here, so I'm going for something that's a little more macabre, as usual. Of course. Um, but I think you'll appreciate <sighs> it once I'm once I'm done. I'm actually gonna side with Thanos on this and say, you know, if you take into perspective half the population being gone like what that can do for it would just do fucking wonders for our environment for like the jobs available like the economy it like think about half of student loan debt how much that would drop the fucking <laughs> see the debt ceiling on this country well, like true true we would get true. just Extinct animals would probably come back, a lot, like not extinct, but like on the verge. Endangered species would probably be able to repopulate more because yeah. of the less threat of um, being hunted. Like on that note, because this ties in directly with what you're saying. Um, for all interested parties, there is actually a subreddit. Uh, go to reddit.com uh, slash r slash Thanos did nothing wrong. <laughs> I knew it. Oh my god! I knew it. <laughs> and it's pretty much just everyone agreeing with Dustin. Yeah, I mean, it's it, look, it's a dark way to look at it, and. It's kind of like Thanos says, like, he doesn't want to do it, but, I mean, it's going to it's gonna help everybody out when it's all over. He's making the tough choice. I mean, if, I mean, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, my honestly, my silver linings, 
I have one that's basically the same as yours, and I have another one that is a joke. Okay, well, let's hear the joke one first, because I'm I'm curious. <laughs> nope, I'm gonna go with the one that's similar. To okay, yours. <laughs> um, it's just it's just that. Like, if you look at Thanos as the main character and the protagonist, he had a, this movie actually has a really happy ending for him. Yeah. Yeah. He succeeded in his goal. He can go retire. He can, you know, relax. Uh, he's going to have some chest pain for a while. <laughs> um, his left arm, little singed. It's fine. Yeah. Um, he seemed right handed for the most part anyway, so whatever, which is odd that he got the Infinity Gauntlet on his left hand. Whatever. Anyway. Um, my other alternate silver lining is that, hey, Thor has two eyes again. He can see. His <laughs> oh vision God. is not at all fucked up anymore. I gotta tell you, so I, didn't, I did not care about Thor getting another eye. I kind of was hoping. Me neither. I thought that was so weird. I was like, okay, I guess. I get, So now he has one blue eye and one brown eye. I guess it like, just I makes it easier in post. They, they were like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. like, because he looked badass with the eye yeah. patch. Just throwing it out there. Like, it's no, like, Captain America's beard yeah. badass. But, like, it was pretty badass. So, Jesse, you're not required to give us My the silver, silver lining, lining, but I have a feeling you can you, always take the obvious, I, uh, the one we talked about before we started recording. I know. I think I will. It's like the silver lining of, they're going to come back. Yeah. You just, you know it. <laughs> like, I felt that immediately when I walked out because I, I don't know. I love that stupid stuff where it's like. You go back into the theater and you're like, yay, they're back, they're back. But I agree with what you were saying earlier, like consequences, because mm-hmm. they don't do that. Mm-hmm. And part of that, like when they do these consequences, makes it so much more yeah. like intense. Like Loki's death and feels more impactful. Yes, than, it's impactful, yeah. right. So part of me is also hoping that not all of them do. But mm-hmm. then I also like love the silver lining of, you know. Yay, they come back. And, yeah. <laughs> and it's so happy and these badass entrances and everyone cries and it's great. Yep. So I don't know. That's so fine. we'll, we'll uh, I, we, we don't know. We could reconvene next, uh, a year from now. It, yeah. And uh, yeah. maybe. I, honestly, no matter how the next one ends, I feel like we got to do a follow up to this. <laughs> it's, <laughs> like, people are going to die. So at least we'll have to talk about that. We, we have to. So Because well, yeah. like, you know, we talk, we keep talking like, oh, we know people are going to come back. But the big question is, what are they going to have to sacrifice mm-hmm. to get them back? And that's, that's why true. I think more bodies are going to drop. So, Let the bodies hit the um, no. Mally, after people walk out of this theater, <laughs> uh, as evidenced by my theater experience, a lot of people don't walk out this movie feeling very great. Um, after you, you know, this movie's 10 years in the making, you've come to know these characters really well. What's a movie people should watch after they watch Avengers Infinity War? As a pick me up, something they can feel better about them. They don't have to sit there and just just sit with their thoughts <laughs> and uh, their what ifs. Um, I actually, I, I actually, I actually have two. Okay. Um, the obvious choice, you know, go back to where it all began. Iron Man one. Oh my god! God damn it! <laughs> Why don't you pick a pick another movie? <laughs> okay, my other. That was yours. Yep. Wasn't it, <laughs> nice. <laughs> Um, son of a bitch. We really got to start communicating. Before, before <laughs> no, this, this is the, this is the fun part is we have to think on our feet. So g- 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 give me uh, something else okay, and I'll come my, on something else. My alternate, it is a, uh, it's a, it's really, uh, you know, I'm, as I said, I'm a big Captain America fan. So obviously I'm going to go with a Chris Evans classic, not another teen movie. Oh, oh my gosh. That's, it yeah. is, it is impressive. Yeah. He has had such yeah. a okay. weird career trajectory. That man had the biggest glow up of all yeah. time. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. That's um, a good one. So, yeah, you know, I, I originally thought the same thing. I was like, why don't you go back and revisit this? And I initially had Iron Man 1 written down here. But now I'm just thinking, like, <clears throat> what's what's the opposite of this movie? Uh, what's something that you can watch at with kind of the same stakes and you just laugh because it's not as great? Oh, I know where this so is So I'm going to recommend a movie that also came out last year. Uh-huh. uh-huh a little film called Justice League. Yeah, oh. because uh, <laughs> you get to see how this movie should be done the wrong way, and it's interesting oh to compare the two. God. That's true. That's actually a good point. That and movie's so it's bad. So bad. <laughs> um, <laughs> it is the worst. Oh, it's so. Awful. Jesse, do you have a movie people can watch? You don't have to. It's okay if you don't. Oh um, I put you on the spot, but 
Jesse, don't say Iron Man one, <laughs> and don't say Iron Man two either. Um, but what's <laughs> I don't know. I I want to say I want to say like maybe Captain America or like the original Avengers. The first Avengers that would be kind of nice to, Just, to see. But then yeah. also you might be kind of sad because yeah. you're like, uh, I know what happens. Yeah. But yeah. I would probably watch. I kind of wanted to watch the first Avengers. You know, I kind of did it. too. I, Just to be like. Yay, like yeah. they're fighting and they win, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> to see where things were much simpler when Loki was the villain. <laughs> right. I know. Right. Oh, Loki. Oh, oh. That would be hard, oh, though. Man. Well, I do love me some Tom it. Hiddleston. That is. Mm, <laughs> oh my God. Go watch Kong Skull Island. Um, I've seen it. It's okay. How about, I how love about we do it. that? How about we do that? How about it we is, do it? Uh, it is so entertaining. Pick me a movie alternative, Kong Skull Island. How about that? Yeah, I, I'm okay. with it. Uh, if you miss, let's just re- if you miss, I mean, we're gonna recommend we're gonna recommend one movie for every cast member of Infinity War. Go. <laughs> okay. If you miss so. Loki, go watch Kong Skull Island. There you go. Yeah, there you go. Chadwick Bosman, Fruitvale Station. Oh wait, <laughs> no. Um. All right, so that is Avengers that Infinity plan fell War. So quickly, yeah, it did. That is Avengers Infinity War from 2018. <laughs> if you haven't seen it by now, sorry. Um, That's a bummer. Yeah. Thank you for listening, everyone. Please, if you would, subscribe and leave us a rating wherever you are, iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, or YouTube. Uh, you can leave us uh, a suggestion for an episode we should cover on our subreddit at reddit.com slash r slash silver linings playlist. You can also enter the contest code we gave you from this episode in the official discussion thread for Avengers Infinity War. You can leave us feedback, uh, talk about this movie with your peers, whatever you want to do. You can do it all on our subreddit. Uh, clue for next week's episode, Mally. Not all dumplings are created equal. <laughs> okay. And it was funny. <laughs> it's funny because the, the clue we gave last week was also for the movie we're going to be doing next week. But we decided to make or room. It also worked. Yeah, it worked pretty well, well for well Avengers. For this movie as well. So we kind of made room for it. Um, and, you know, there might be a ripple effect in our schedule since we made room for this. So next week might not even be the clue I just gave you. So we'll figure it out. Um, Plot twist. <laughs> we never do that movie. We never do that movie. <laughs> All right. Uh, Jesse, thank you for being on. You were Talk a good guest. A Yay. Ending. Okay, good. Well, thank you for having me. <laughs> if, um, if we do re- – thanks. Yay. If we do reconvene <laughs> for whatever the untitled Avengers yes. 4 episode is, we'd like to have you on so we can have a full discussion yes. about the two. So you're welcome Victory to come back. Lap. <laughs> I would love to. All right. Mally, anything else you want to discuss before we sign off for this week? Again, I have so much more things to say, but that's for another time in another place. Mm-hmm. So, as always... I am Steve Rogers. Son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs>